Allah as believers, bi Allah as believers in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal, we hope that we are sound, of sound belief. We have been privileged with this reality that you may attain happiness in the ultimate sense unlike any other human being upon earth. But let us evaluate ourselves, each one. Do we have it? Do we have happiness? Are you happy in the ultimate sense? Probably many of us will say no. I get happy sometimes. Huh? There's a few days a month where I feel good. But man, the rest of the days is just suffering. I'm suffering, Akhi. I don't know what the problem is. I don't know where to, I don't know where to begin. I cannot seem to identify the, the, the symptoms. I don't know the treatment. I'm just lost. Although this is not and is not befitting for one who believes in Allah on the last day. So inshallah tonight, as it, it is our custom, to try to make this not just an academic uh, lecture where you hear some information and you go home and sleep you know and wake up the next day with the same attitude you had before you came here rather we hope that brothers and sisters will take some reminders and act accordingly so you will actually attain happiness and trust me and not because I've experienced it trust me because we've read the statements of the scholars happiness is attainable in this dunya Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah Just look at Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah Rahimahullah ta'ala A man that just, just broke all barriers One that you cannot cease to be amazed When you read his biography And then you look at his work What he produced for this ummah It's just unmanageable It's unthinkable that some human being Will be able to survive What Shaykh al-Islam survived And give so much knowledge for the ummah that we benefit from up until this moment and inshallah until the day of judgment. As long as Islam remains, Shaykh al-Islam's knowledge shall remain as well. A man who was imprisoned. See, I told you we were free. And this man was imprisoned for the sake of Allah. He died in prison. Do you think because he robbed a bank? No. Because of a fatwa. Because he proclaimed the truth when the people don't like to hear the truth. They didn't like the truth. Dealing with grave worshipping and visiting the graves and someone traveling to some country in order to visit Maulana X. Who may be the most corrupt person on earth. Died as a fornicator. An alcoholic. He was abandoned in salah. But they call him Wali. So we go to his gravesite and seek some aid. Forget about Iyaka na'budu wa Iyaka nasta'een. And all the deen of Islam which is based on the oneness of Allah and seeking his help at the time of help. You go to a dead man in the grave. He will get it for you. So when he gave a fatwa, he was imprisoned. Now he made a statement that you should know. When they imprisoned him, he said, What can my enemies do to me? Now these are his enemies. They got him in prison. You know, he's handcuffed probably with some ropes. They probably didn't have the chains back then, right? And he's being put in a single cell on his own. He's not mixing with anyone. He said, what can my enemies do to me? My Jannah, meaning my garden, my place of delight and happiness is in my chest. You can imprison the body, but you cannot imprison the soul. He said, if they put me by myself in the cell, this is being alone with Allah. Not that Allah Azza wa Jal is in the cell. We said Allah is above His creation, above His throne, in a manner which befits His majesty. But what that means, that there's no one to distract Him from remembering Allah, from worshipping Allah, from seeking Allah's love, and attaining Allah's love. No one can interrupt Him and talk, you know, too much over His head. He said, this is just khalwa. This is perfect for me. If they take me out, it's tourism. Just, you know, go on vacation. They want to send me to another prison across the country? Nothing mushkila. If they kill me, I'm a shaheed. I'm a martyr. He didn't go into prison because of a sin or because of a crime. He went because for the sake of Allah. In order to revive and maintain and protect the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now I wonder if any one of us could ever say that if he was ever imprisoned. Probably we'll start crying before we even make it in there. 
And we will start grieving and say, my children, my wife, my family, my mother, my father, my neighbors, my masjid, and so on and so forth. They'll probably just lose hope. Just, just lie down on the floor in the prison, hoping that death comes around soon. Because we did not have what Shaykh al-Islam had. Rahmatullahi alayhi. But it is attainable. That's the problem. Now we're talking about, we're not talking about some, he's, a, he's an angel. This was a man like me and you. Woman also. Meaning a human being, what I mean by man. Something that is attainable for any one of us. Except that sometimes we think that it is not possible because of the whispers of the shaitan. So we surrender immediately. Say, khalas, I can't do this man. Happiness is not for me. Happiness is in Jannah. Yes, ultimately. But today, you can be happy. How can you be happy? The most fundamental reason is Iman and Amalun Salihun. What does that mean? Faith. Not any faith. Because people have faith in Buddha. And others have faith in a cow. And others have faith in Jesus. And that faith is a, in vain. It's a hopeless faith. It seems to be faithful, so do the individuals. But in essence, it is not one that will produce happiness. Because its foundation is falsehood. And whenever you try to build something upon falsehood, it will fall apart. You see what I'm saying? You try to construct a house, and your foundation is not sound. Your cement is still, you know, not dry. Whatever you put up on there is going to fall down. It's not going to remain. Because your foundation is not correct. So then when we speak about faith, we talk about Islamic faith. And within the Islamic faith, the faith of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, the people of the Sunnah, those who did not deviate, those who did not go left or right like the Fora Imma and the Sahaba prior to them, and those who came after them among the Tabi'een. And Amal Salih, righteous deeds, doing righteous deeds. It's not enough to be a Mu'min, because if you were truly a Mu'min, you would be obeying Allah and His Messenger. And if you had the privilege to pray with us in this next door masjid, which I always encourage the brothers to do so, this masjid, that, not, not this one here. Don't, don't worry, this musalla, try to avoid praying in the musalla. Pray in the masjid across from the graveyard, just behind the hospital. MashaAllah, they have different uh, imams in each one of them's voice and recitation is better than the previous one. And he was dealing with some ayat in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which are really striking, you know, they strike you as... Uh, to, 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 we realize how far away we are concerning the good deeds and the bad deeds and the righteousness that we are supposed to be upon. The ayah which Allah says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولُ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ You hear this ayah and you'll be shocked. Say, if you love Allah, truly love Allah, look at this ayah, if you truly love Allah, فَاتَّبِعُونِي We've dealt with this before, then follow me. Who? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you do so, Allah will love you. And He will forgive you your sins. And Allah is all forgiven, most merciful. Then the next ayah says, Say, قُلْ أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولُ Obey Allah and the Messenger. But if they turn away, then really Allah does not love the disbelievers. Disbelievers! Meaning anyone who does not obey Allah and His Messenger has a quality of disbelief. We don't say he's a disbeliever unless he disobeys them in the ultimate sense. But that means that the more disobedience one has, the more one has a quality of disbelief. And the scholars have established that. That every good deed...